Hello. Well, some YouTubers have a mailbox uh, section where they open packages that people have sent them. This is kind of uh, my mailbox. Let's see what we have here. Well, to start with, I'm afraid it's a VHS machine. But um, I don't mind these because this model shares the same deck as some um, Super VHS machines. So uh, it's a little bit better than just your average VHS. Uh, even if it's not used as a machine in itself, uh, it could certainly come in useful for parts to uh, resurrect more expensive models. Um, anyway, they're quite good, the Panasonics. So I probably wouldn't use it for tape transfers, but um, it could come in handy for something. We'll test that one out later. Now then, what could possibly be in this one? Uh, I think the clue's on the box. Let's have a look. Yes, an NVHS 1000 Super VHS machine with digital time base corrector. Let's have a look at it. Here I've put the NVHS 1000 with its sister machine, the AG4700. And you might say, <laughs> there's no difference between those two at all, apart from the color. And you'd be almost right. So this is like the studio version, if you like, or um, professional machine, and this is the domestic one. But there are actually a few small differences between them. Uh, one is that there's a um, frame accurate editing facility built in a standard on the AG4700, and it was optional extra on the NVHS 1000. They also have a different remote control and, of course, a different colour. There may be some other differences as well that I'm not aware of. But uh, they certainly have all the same controls and parts will be largely interchangeable between them. Now, this is non-working. I think this needs uh, a new idler system. This one, I don't know anything about. Let's uh, put a tape in it and see what it does. OK, start by powering it up. Display is not terribly bright, but it is working. It bleeps satisfyingly. Let's see if we can put a tape in. It's gone straight into play. That looks like clogged heads, doesn't it? Oh, and it's stopped. That probably means the take-up spool wasn't running properly. It's making some odd squeaking noises. OK, let's take the lid off and take a look inside. OK, I've set you up so you can see down on the deck. Everything appears to be in good order. Just taking a general look at it. The um, head cleaner roller is very dirty on one side, which implies it's not been rotating properly. This cable, I think, should be secured inside this bracket, and it isn't. Let me get you a better view of that. There's a bracket here, and the cable seems to be not properly fitted in there, which implies that maybe it's been taken apart at some point. Uh, why is this spring? loose. That's not right, is it? Clearly not. Without that, the pinch roller won't work. The spring should be connected to the back here. <laughs> that would certainly stop it working. Let's see if we can uh, sort that problem out. There we go, that's better. Power it up. Oh dear. I wonder if somebody's disconnected that spring because when it's in place, the deck's um, struggling. It's making the noise of the loading motor spinning, 
when the um, loading motor coupling um, has split. It's a very common problem on these. So do I look at that first? Probably. So here's a loading motor and the coupling fails inside here. But uh, yeah, you do have to take the deck out on this one. Okay, let's see if I can eject the tape at all. No, it's not doing very well. Let's unhook this again and see if that helps us to uh, eject the tape. Okay, it hasn't done my tape much good. There's supposed to be a screw there, but I see it's missing already. So somebody's taken this deck out and couldn't be bothered to refit the screw. Okay, here's the deck. Had a bit of trouble unplugging this cable. I'm not sure it was in the right place. Somebody had messed about with it. So um, let's refit the spring before it falls off and we lose it. Right, I've done a video before where I mentioned this problem with the uh, coupling inside this motor. Need to ease these clips on the other side of the uh, housing so that it pops out. If you don't, you likely snap them off. Okay. Now we can get the uh, motor off. And in here is a coupling. And that will have split. Oh look, I don't think we need a microscope for that. Let's zoom you in. You can see the split there. So uh, we'll replace this. There is apparently a special tool for reassembling this with just the right clearance. That's about right. Okay, so that's a defective part. Hopefully now I can reassemble this and the deck will work properly. Something I've just noticed is that the uh, pinch roller looks very shiny, so uh, that might need a little attention. That looks very smooth. I think rather than use glass paper on that, I'll use some platen clean, which is a roller restorer. Primarily for printers.
Okay. Do we have the machine back enough together that we can uh, risk putting a tape in? Let's give it a whirl. Well, that's a lot better than it was. Let's try fast forward. Seems okay. Rewind. And play. Right, mechanically it's working. Let's see if we get any kind of picture. Okay, let's see if we uh, get any results from this. Uh, mistracking, which is interesting. I wonder why that is. Has somebody been fiddling with the tape guides, do you think? Let's have a look at picture search. Doesn't look completely out of the way. I think somebody's been fiddling with the tape guides. There's also, I notice, no hi-fi sound, which is another clue that somebody's been fiddling with the tape guides. And I think that would be the exit guide. Let's just have a quick look at that. The deck's not screwed down, which of course isn't ideal because you can get twist in it, but I don't think it's enough to be causing that sort of problem. Yes, it's very slack. Hi-fi sounds come on. Okay, that could use setting up properly with the FM envelope on an oscilloscope, but for now, that's got us in a ballpark. The lines don't appear to be evenly spaced, so there's still a slight alignment problem, I suspect. Actually, that looks a bit better. So we're in the order of things. Let's eject the tape. Okay. Hey, that's not bad for first attempt. I'll fit the screws back in the deck and I'm going to try and find one to replace the missing screw down there. Okay, well I'd say for a first pass of a machine that uh, I've only been working on for a few minutes, uh, that's not a bad start. So uh, we'll put that away for a minute and let's have a play with the other one. Okay, let's try the um, VHS one, NVFJ710. This was given to me by somebody else. Pad it up. Oh, sounds like there might be a tape in there. Should we just pop that out? Some film or other. Okay. Let's play. Oh my. Oh, that's a huge tracking error. That is man massive. I don't know what it thinks it's doing now. Stop. Oh, that's weird. So it's clearly got something mechanically wrong with it. Okay, let's um, have a look. I wouldn't normally bother with a VHS machine, but since these have got at least uh, some SVHS equivalents, 
what applies to this would also apply to some SVHS machines. It's therefore worth at least having a quick look. And I'm just interested too. What could cause such a massive tracking error? I'm guessing the um, loading arms aren't in place or there's some debris in the deck. There would be uh, possible causes. The load ah look that loading arm's not fully engaged is the other one no the loading arms are not fully laced up let's uh get you a better view so there's pins here and the loading arm there's a v shape in the bottom of the plastic work for the loading arm that should engage with that it doesn't appear to be that's um so that's Okay, good. Then let it lace up again. So give it a push. Um, that almost worked actually. Let's try that again. Can I play it from that point? Oh, the arms have come back again. What's it thinking of? So that was ejected, did that correctly. I'll just stop that and I'll manually see if I can get it to complete the uh, lace up. This could be a problem with the mode switch. Got to be careful with these machines because there's live mains over here, albeit I'm running this one on um, an isolation transformer anyway. Yeah, I think it's um, believing that it's laced way too early. It's not laced yet. Although the pinch roller is engaged. I think we're going to have to take the deck out and have a look at the uh, the arms. It may be that these are um, out of sequence. If the machine is beyond repair though, that screw could be just what we're looking for, for the missing screw on the uh, K mechanism machine we were looking at earlier. Big problem of course being that you can't uh, exercise the deck very much now. Let's try um, manually driving the uh, loading motor. Well, I think it'll need a tape in there to uh, allow it to uh, go in. Is it not um, not fully lacing? Why would that be? Okay, after much poking about, uh, I've got this retimed. So the position of these uh, loading arms and the gears for the loading arms and quite importantly a uh, spring on the left hand side which had fallen off is all as it should be 
uh, compared to a known working deck. But I think there may be a problem here. I think we may have some stripped teeth. So if it doesn't work now, then it isn't going to work. But let's um, power it up and just see if it does. I've not screwed the uh, deck down yet. That's better. Is that correctly laced now? No. The arms are still not fully laced up. Eject. Will it eject? No, so we're still in the same position. It's not lacing up properly and I think there's a, a problem in the um, mechanism here where this slider goes across and it should send the arms to the fully laced position and I suspect there's some uh, stripped teeth in there, I can't quite see but it's uh, not going fully laced so I think this machine is a dead loss After the failure that was that VHS machine let me just show you this, it's an NVHS850 it's a super VHS machine which shares the same deck and you can see how the guides go fully all the way in there and we'll do an eject. The strong lights here are confusing the opto sensors. If I uh, cover them, they may uh, allow us to eject the tape. This is a problem with VHS that opto sensors get confused by strong light. Didn't bother beta, of course. Let's just uh, cover the deck for a moment and maybe it'll uh, allow us to eject the tape. There we go. Who would ever design such a silly format? Right, now uh, we've got some more things that have been given to me today. Let's uh, see what else we have. Okay, something a bit uh, VHS and average is a sharp um, VHS Hi-Fi. Doesn't seem to have a model number at the front. Does uh, VPS PDC. <laughs> in another life, I was actually involved in the silicon chips for that. Printed in very small print on the bottom here. Uh, VCM60HM, something like that. Not very good model number. Made in the UK, it says. Shall we uh, plug it in just for fun? It says sharp on the display. I've never seen that before. Okay, it's gone into a menu. I don't know if we have a remote for it. Usually if you switch it off and on again, it'll come out of those menus. Yes, well, that seems to work. Oh, look, menu. Oh, you can actually operate the menu without the remote. I like that. Let's take a quick look inside, shall we? So what do we have? Sankyo it says there, famous more for motors than anything else. That appears to be uh, the head amplifier, I think. That's not the motor, is it? There's a head amplifier, the motor's underneath. Care here because there's mains on that board. I'm guessing this board is uh, to do with the program delivery control, which would set your video recorder to record at the uh, right time for the programs. A fairly typical late VHS cheap deck. The power supply is looking a little bit the worse for wear over there. A little bit hot and bothered. So, uh, not really any special features. And so, it's not really a machine I'm likely to make a huge amount of use of because I don't run VHS tapes on VHS machines. I run VHS tapes on Super VHS machines with a few notable exceptions, such as uh, C-cam tapes. Also in the same collection, I've been given this. Uh, it's a Panasonic uh, DVD recorder. Uh, also takes a uh, memory card from a camcorder, probably. Something I quite like about the Panasonic DVD recorders is that they will record NTSC and PAL whereas the JVC ones that I use a lot uh, are PAL only 
And it's nice to have HDMI out so you can connect it to modern TV. Shall we just power it up and see if it works? Flashing cock. Power it up. Hello! Open. No disc. Open. There we go. I don't, of course, record very much on DVD these days, but uh, it still has the potential to be useful for something. You can also, this is when you had the old, uh, should we go to DVD minus R or plus R? Well, it does both along with DVD RAM, so yeah, pretty flexible. Has it covered? There's no hard disk in this one, though. It's DVD only. I do have downstairs a Panasonic machine which includes a hard disk. So that's the uh, Panasonic DMR EZ25. What else have I been given? Wow, a bag full of goodies. Let's have a rummage. Aha, right, now then. I need to talk to you about this one. Something a bit special about that. Uh, Super VHSC. Some uh, various cables. That's the modulator for that camcorder. Instructions for that camcorder. Mains supply charger for that camcorder. Power supply for the Sony camcorder. Uh, another Panasonic charger. Some camcorders came with wacky plugs or sockets on them. More bundles of cables. I think there's something else in here that's interesting. Oh, right. A Panasonic Mini DV. So that, I think, is what this one is for. And it takes SD card as well. So I've got a card in there. That's quite a sweet little thing. Okay, I was going to briefly demonstrate the Panasonic Super VHS C, but then I discovered that uh, of all the piles of tapes I have, I don't have any VHS C or Super VHS C uh, tapes. Um, and that is Partly because, you know, the format did fail. You know, there's no two ways about it. 8mm uh, outsold VHS-C by a large margin. And for the high band versions, Hi8 outsold Super VHS-C by a very large margin. So v Super VHS-C is actually really very rare. It was a format that pretty much bombed. Why would you buy a Super VHS-C camcorder when... An 8mm camcorder gives you longer running time and smaller tapes. I mean, and a smaller camcorder uh, and potentially better quality. <laughs> Why would anybody bother with, with Super VHSC? And I think that um, that logic was such that the format just didn't go anywhere. Some people bought VHS-C, the vanilla version, because they could play it in their home video recorder, but most people didn't have Super VHS video recorders. They were relatively uncommon. And if you were the sort of person who was really into um, high-performance videography and you had a Super VHS uh, video recorder, well, you were probably actually editing from Hi8 onto it anyway. So I really don't see what this was about. So um, let's... Let's see if we can power it up, shall we? Ah, we found the DC in port. Okay, well, let's see if we can get this uh, old monster to 
do anything for us. Aha, there you go. This rather bendy affair is where you'd put the VHSC tape. That does seem a bit flimsy. Is it actually supposed to be that flimsy? Or is it a bit missing? Yes, it's supposed to work like that. This arrangement doesn't seem to charge the cam the battery when it's on the camera. That's a bit poor, isn't it? You'd kind of hope that would do that. Oh, there we are. There's the power switch. It's now on. VTR for just tape play. And camera. And is there anything through the viewfinder? It does seem to still work. Very misty image. But yes, we do seem to have some kind of image there. So it's a, a camcorder that's possibly outlived its usefulness, that one. This, however, is not, and I've actually already used this one today. This is a one of the later Hi8 camcorders. And it's very much uh, a bottom of the range. I8. Why that uh, turned out to be interesting is because of the connections on it. All the Hi8 equipment I have is stereo, but this one is almost unique and it's only got mono output. And the reason that was useful is that I had a customer tape in with an audio defect, and what it was doing is triggering uh, any stereo player to think it was stereo when it was really mono and pr producing an awful distorted noise. So what I needed was a Hi8 player with mono audio. So that couldn't be tricked into thinking it was stereo and would just play it properly. And to some extent it worked. It did give slightly better sound than the problem we were having before. There was still a sound defect, but it was much better than when playing on a stereo machine. But I also noticed on these connections, this really is um, scraping the bow for Hi8 because where's the S-Video connector? What's the point of having a high band recording and then not being able to uh, play it through an S-Video connector? And at first I thought, oh, this must just be a blank or you know, as a, a cover for the S-Video port. But no, that is just nothing that's just plastic so uh, that's where the s-video port would be that's where the other audio channel would be if it was stereo so this one really is uh, the very bottom of the range although it might have a time-based corrector in it so let's just have a look through the menus and see if we can find that NTSC playback option LCD color these do tend to jiggle around a lot. Letter size, etc. Hmm. No, there's no TBC in this one. So uh, it really is a very basic high 8 camcorder. When obviously analog was coming to the end, because this chassis here is virtually identical to what you'd find on uh, a digital 8 camcorder. So the mechanism in there is is virtually identical, if not absolutely identical, to uh, what you get on a digital 8. Just different heads. Pop a tape in. And that's playing fine. So what's this? This is the power cable, I think, for this little mini DV camcorder. This does happen sometimes. These grips disintegrate. It's a bit unpleasant. Sony ones do that too. Come on, somebody tell me where the power connector is. Under the battery. And what a weird place for the S-Video connector. Oh, there's a tape in there. Blank, it says. Should we find out? Not 
doing anything. It's behaving as though there's no tape in there, it won't do anything. And the power light's flashing in doubles, which might mean an alarm condition of some sort. Let's just reset it. That was it, some sort of error. Oh, there we go, it is working. It's double flashing that light again. So what we have there is a <laughs> unhappy, I think, uh, mini DV camcorder. It goes into alarm mode when you hit rewind. So there's some fault with that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, rummage through my uh, mailbox, which was uh, all kinds of interesting things. So what do we have? A Super VHS, which uh, I've got basically working. That needs a bit more servicing, but you can tell it's going to work. A VHS, which uh, seems to be a bit of a dead loss because it's got a deck fault. Then followed by a uh, Sharp VHS machine, which works. And a Panasonic DVD recorder, which I haven't fully tested, but looks okay. Uh, there's a uh, Panasonic a Super VHS-C camcorder, which looks like it might work, but <laughs> it's not terribly useful. Um, a Sony bottom of the range Hi8 uh, camcorder, which does work and might actually be useful because it uh, has a mono audio port, which can occasionally come in handy with difficult tapes. Uh, we've got a mini DV camcorder, which is not working. Uh, I think that's it. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, rummage through all this rubbish. Uh, please do remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.